Muhammad Hijab asked this Christian a very interesting question about the Trinity, and his response will shock you. Uh, I study uh, Thomas Aquinas. Oh, fantastic. Now, you said that the Trinity would be irrational. I didn't to, say that. To I, I didn't say it would be irrational. From, rash, from natural reason. No, I, I, I didn't say it would be irrational. No, I, all I said was this. At this point, we're doing just one thought experiment. Yes. Of course, I believe the Trinity is irrational. We can talk about that's a different thing, but okay. in, for the purpose, okay, so oh, no, but for the purpose, yeah, I'm saying yeah, for the pur yeah. for the purposes of this discussion today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all we're doing is as follows: yeah. we're saying remove all cultural references, yeah. all historical references, all religious references, mm -hmm. all scriptures. You have the Quran, the Bible, all of this. You have the ca the councils, all of those. Delete them. Delete mm -hmm. it. Yes. All you have now mm -hmm. is three things: you have rationality, mm -hmm. you have uh, your, in, your five senses and, and your you have intuition. intuition. Yep. I'm saying the onus is on you now yep. to show me how the Trinity is true based on these three things, nothing else. Yeah. So can you do that? Okay. As a Christian, yeah, especially please. as a Reformed Catholic, yeah. we are not allowed to reason our way to the Trinity. We can reason to God, but not the Trinity. But I can explain to you three reasons why, why allowed the to Trinity do that? would be metaphysically necessary. Why, but why are you not allowed to do that? We're not allowed to do that because it's a heresy called Belaganism. Sure, but... Reason. Uh, what I was going to say to you is this. My claim is this. If you ask me, yeah. prove Allah. I say, the basic concept of Allah can be proven on a rational level, bottom up. Mm. Okay? Can be proven on a rational level. You can even be... In, you can even say there's instinct of it. There's evidence of instinct. And you guys know about the study. You know, uh, Justin Barrett and so on, and the 32,000 people. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. sure. No, but what I'm saying is that there's evidence that we're born with an, in, an in, uh, ingrained, intuitive idea that God exists. Yep, I agree. There's no evidence that we're born believing Jesus is God, that the Son is God, that the Holy Spirit is God. Yep. No, one, no one who has not been socialized into it. Yes, would say, okay, Jesus him. is That's God. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. And likewise, no one would say Muhammad is a prophet. Yeah. I, I, agree, I, I agree with that. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the basic idea of God, yeah. yes, the, yeah. the basic idea of God, yeah. we can say intuitively we have mm. evidence that you can get to that yep. without any scripture. Rationally, mm. we have all the arguments for God's existence, as you know, yeah. which bring us to the necessary being, yeah. the independent one, mm. which is the basic idea of God. Yeah. We don't need scripture to prove yeah. Allah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, can you do the same thing with the basic idea of the Trinity? Yeah, we don't need scripture to prove Yahweh, since the nominal name uh, Allah, Yahweh, cannot be deciphered without scripture. So here's the thing, according to your position. I can reason to the Trinity and show how the Trinity is metaphysically necessary. And I will discuss that with you. I'm saying that as a Christian, I'm taking this risk because I don't believe I'm allowed to because it's a heresy. You're not supposed to reason your way through sacramental secrets of the faith. You're not supposed to do that. Now, okay. but I will reason can it Can you do it? I can do it. Okay, so, can you do it? when you re we both agree, we both agree on the common supposition that God is necessary. Sure. And I believe that God is divinely simplistically necessary. I don't know what you believe in yet. Yeah, hey, cool. I believe that God is divinely simplistic, uh, simplistically necessary. Now, because we have intelligible operations that we do, like I'm speaking to you, right? That's me using my speech. I'm looking at you, that's me using my eyes. My intelligible operations are produced from my senses because without my senses, I would not be able to know anything. These are really distinct from who I am because if I did not have the ability to speak, I would still be critical Thomas. Now, these intelligible operations don't produce anything in me because they're not intrinsically identical to who I am. But because God is divinely simple, his intelligible operations, the act of him knowing himself and the act of him loving himself, okay. it, don't cut me off please, is intrinsic and necessary to him knowing who he is. So God, the Father, try, and when I say try, I'm not talking about like in a metaphysical sense, just talking about in a logical sense. He tries to know himself. When he tries to know himself, the object that is known is him, which is the Son. The Father and the Son then love themselves which is produced from the act of the willing. The act of the will produces a relation, which is the Holy Spirit. We call it the Holy Spirit because that's what's given to us in scripture. Although it's still three objects nonetheless. Now these three relations are necessarily real dis really distinct because that means really different because when you have a real relation, it's obviously really distinct. You can never have a real relation that's only conceptually distinct. So they're necessarily really distinct. They're really different. 
but they still exist in the same essence, the same nature, the same substance. And this is going to be necessary because the intelligible operations is identical to its essence. If it's not necessary, you're going to have to say that Allah, or whatever God it is, only contingently began to love. That he never actually loved himself, or he never actually knew himself before he produced the world, and then he started to know the world and love the world. That's contingency. Allah has, God, whoever he, whatever you want to call him, he's always existed and he's always known himself and he's always loved himself. And that necessarily produces relations because he cannot know himself. I cannot know you without you existing, right? I need to know you, right? And the object of you. I need to have the object of you before I know you. So the father is trying to know his infinite essence, just logically speaking. Is now, he now produces a relation to an object that is known. That is the sun. That's why we call the sun the word of God, becoming the wisdom okay, of God. So you, and then sure. produces the there's, Holy Spirit. There's a few things that you've mentioned. You can metaphysically right. uh, reduce that right. to reason. So you've got three, yeah. right? Well, uh, I've got two questions. Because you, yeah. mentioned, you mentioned love, right? Yeah. You mentioned the Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Holy Spirit. No, the Father and the Son willingly love the Holy Spirit, sure. which proceeds from Father, the, uh, okay, sure. the will. Okay, no uh, love as an attribute of God. Love as an attribute of the necessary being. Yeah. Uh, how do you prove that from first principles? Love? Yeah. Okay, first principle. The only first principle in the Aristotelian sense is the principle of non-contradiction. So I don't... That, that statement doesn't make sense. But you, that you from can... A, from a bottom up... You can yeah, reason yeah, that yeah, God loves yeah, no, because... No, no, no. Okay, go uh, on. Maybe you've misunderstood my question. So, when you're... As you may be aware, because you're interested in Thomas Aquinas. Right? Yeah. He had his five ways of mm. proving God's existence. Mm -hmm. There's some of theological, right? And, and what he was doing in those in that exercise was showing how God exists. Mm. Would you agree, right? Five different ways of showing God exists. Yeah, five ways. Sure? Alright. So when I say bottom up or first principles, I'm talking about the methods. You talk about the axioms? I'm talking about the methods, I'm being clear about what I mean by it. Which the like of which Aquinas used in proving God's existence in the first place. The methods, yeah, like so our, the Aristotelian methods. Let me explain what I mean by this, because you're a Thomist. Yeah. So, Thomas Aquinas, he had five arguments for God's existence. Mm. None of those arguments for God's existence that he had mm. led to a triune God. None of them. Would you agree with that? Aquinas did not what I'm telling you, I'm not supposed to try to reason my way to the Trinity. I'm not allowed to, to heresy. No, no, it's Pelagianism. No, 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 yeah, but I did, I did, I did because I told you, and everyone that's watching the video knows, okay. I told you okay. that I am not supposed to and I'm not allowed to. Aquinas acknowledged this. He even wrote this in Article 28 on the so Divine Religion. Uh, Article 28 on the okay. Article Article 28 in Aquinas Summa Theologica. Question three to question five, yeah. he actually realizes that you can actually reduce God having three necessary real relations. But he doesn't want to prove God that way. No. He says that you proving God alone is sufficient. Okay. You proving no. God through the Trinity, through natural so reason, first, is a heresy. We're not allowed to do that. Okay, but, uh, you cannot. You can have to come. You have to come to that conclusion right, through the sacramental means of sure. efficacious grace, no, which is God. Sure, sure. So I'm not supposed to do that to oh, you. Sure, sure. But I'm only doing that to you because you said that the Trinity is irrational. Right. Okay. okay. So do you mind if I go back to thought experiment? Because I think he's. We might have forgotten the thought experiment. Let me just start again. Yeah. So, we start off by saying, if you remove all scriptures, if you remember what I said, all religious teachings, all narratives, all cultures, you have in your disposal rationality, you have intuition, and you have your five senses, okay? Yep. Now I'm saying, prove the triune, the basic... So you said... Please Did you not like hear what I said though? Excuse me, brother. Yeah. If you show me disrespect, I will turn my back on you. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand this point? You show me okay. disrespect because so, I'm not so, interpreting so, what so I'm saying. I have listened to you very quietly. Okay, so did you... Oh, listen. Can you repeat what listen, I said? Excuse me. Don't do that again. Do you understand? Well, you're just going to turn your back. Excuse me. Don't do that again. So I'm, so yeah, I'm going to go back to the question. We, I'm asking you to prove the Trinity. Yes? Yes. The first principles using those three things that I've just mentioned. You start well, talking about love. You're talking about intuition and the uh, yeah, 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 other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you start talking about love relations. I said, how do you prove the attribute of love yes. without scripture now? Without yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, do, so good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God is pure being. We know this from reason. 
know, we know two things from reason. I mean, know two things from experience, because you said about experience. We know that there's a distinct, or there's a difference between infinite being and finite being. We're all finite being because we can change. God has to be infinite by negation. God is infinite being. Goodness and being are convertible. Convertible means you can literally interchange the two. When you have goodness, you have being. When you have being, you have goodness. Because goodness is something where you cannot find a lack in. Okay? So, in pure being, God is perfectly good. Ontology and what ontology, love? Ontology. Yeah, ontology. Yeah, so ontology. You're goodness is a moral. Uh, no, 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 no. He's trying to say that goodness and being have yeah. a biconditional relationship. Yeah, but I'm saying but it's, it's not, ontologically. By the way, that, sorry to say, I, I, I that's ontology. I'm not. I'm talking to you. Brother, all due respect, he has a right to ask that question because. This, I've not really read anything, even from Aquinas, maybe you can educate me. I'm just like this because you said the Trinity is irrational. Okay. You said my God is irrational. Okay. I'm not going to do respect. We can have... Let's, we can stand the communication. I'm not going to interrupt though, you feel me? Oh, the Trinity true reason is irrational. Irrational. What, the, the question what? is this. Yeah. I want you, I if you if What I actually said, I didn't even say that. I said to you, if you remove all the scriptures, mm. the thought experiment we're doing at the moment is this. Yeah. Prove the Trinity mm. without any reference, mm. okay, so to anything religious. Mm. Just prove so it from bottom up the uh, in the state. same way, yeah. Yeah. This way yeah. as Thomas Aquinas proves yeah. the existence yeah. of God. Now, can you now, using his is, five yeah, methods, more which I agree with them, yeah, for the most part, I like that, they are good. I can't, if you agree so with them, you did define the No, I mean, uh, that's a different question. But divine simplicity is a different question. We can talk about that if you want. So that's about the, the godly attributes. We're talking about godly attributes. Okay, no problem. So Let's stick on the case. Because like the now idea we're going to judge the political process. Oh, yeah. You know, there are Muslim thinkers who did believe in that. Avicina, right? I don't know if he believes in that. Okay, the Mark Tesla's believe in a kind of divine simplicity. You know, but I don't believe in it. Mm. Okay. And you and but uh, anyway, the, the point okay. I'm making to you is this: is that, that from these principles being accepted, how can you prove the Trinity, the yeah. the Trinity in the same way as Aquinas proves God? Absent from the yeah. Okay. Do so that. I okay. I've already done that, and you asked no, me I, about I the because you were talking. One of the things that you said. That he is that you said that well, this love relationship between the Father and the Son? And I was trying to prove why God is loving, right? Yeah, so how'd you do that? Okay, I was going to get to that and then you threatened and you said what you wanted to say again. Okay, so I'm going to tell you again. Goodness and being are convertible because in being. Yeah, okay. Because in be goodness is something where lack or imperfection cannot be found. But being is purely perfect because you cannot find the lack of imperfection in being. Because if you find the lack of perfection in being, then being is not being. Perfection is in being. Perfection is intrinsic to being. I'm going to give you an example. Perfection is at. So I'm going to give you an example. You ask me too many questions. I don't want to go. So okay. He's a man. Good man. Christian. He can see me. He's a human being. If I remove your eyes, that's you're going to be blind, right? That's a negation of your being. I've subtracted something of who you are. If I remove your eyes, you're blind. Nobody wants to be blind. That's bad. So goodness is inherent in your being. You're good as you are. If I remove your eyes, yeah. If I negate yeah. that yeah. being, sorry, sorry. it's going to be bad, right? So, uh, let me finish talk, what... Are you, are you talking about goodness? Because I didn't ask about goodness. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. so th that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, cool. So now, I have proved that goodness and being are convertible terms, right? When you have goodness... Yeah, hold on. When you have goodness, you have being. When you have pure being, you have pure goodness. Now, love defined by Aquinas is willing the absolute good. Okay. So if God is how pure you, goodness how, 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 and God necessarily how, 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 has a will, how, 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 how. he's willing the good. Bro, bro, you're, you're jumping too much. So if God is bro, dynamic, I understand yeah, the theology. Yeah. And by the way, I don't disagree with what you said from so, a theological but it perspective. Do you understand? Mm. Mm. Like if, if you said, do I believe that God is loving? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do I believe you can make a rational case for it? Yeah, I do. But I don't think that that case would be strong. If I'm honest with you, right? It's not a. I think it's pretty strong. Uh, I, you can believe it. Yeah, no, hold on, hold on. Just let brother, please, please. Do me a favor. I agree with that, by the way. There are some attributes of God we believe as a Muslim, like you know, God is all, all merciful, all loving and stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and prove that to somebody. Why? That's what. Me too. Do you see? Because I perfectly at agree. That, at that point, I'm saying at that point you do need a revelation. Exactly. That's, that's that's okay, but you can't you can't do it with rational, but you would just prefer it with no, 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 no. divine revelation that, is the best way. Sure, sure. I'm saying at that point. Yeah. But I'm saying the basic theology of Christianity 
is that there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three, there's three necessary persons in the, in the being of God. Now I'm saying that that itself requires justification. So can you rationalize this? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, and I've Go literally ahead. explained to you that yeah. you can rationalize and you okay, said, so you, said you even said so, so we're on this, on you even said that you can wait hold on please yeah. don't interrupt me you even said that i have been able to rationally conclude this but you wouldn't want to do that to someone based on god because obviously divine revelation is necessary and i believe that a hundred percent i will never literally go to someone and say i'm going to prove the trinity to you rational reasons god forbid i'd rather go to hell but you can rationalize it's not completely irrational yeah sorry I can rationale the Trinity the yeah. without disregarding what you mean. Yes, so it's not so like an irrational so belief, right? When, would, when anyone wants to hear... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a bit, a bit by it. So we're at a point of three. Yeah. So what makes three necessary, not four or two? Okay, now you're asking a better question. Okay, now, the reason why the three relations are necessary is because intelligible operations are only two in number intellect and the will that's literally the meaning of the that's literally the meaning of the mind right i need to know something i need to want something that's the intellect and the will sorry. there's no other intelligible sorry, sorry. operation uh, right sorry, sorry. it's only the intellect sorry. and the will thank you for saying i've asked a very good question yes but i have to sadly say that i don't think you provided a very good answer because oh no, but, no, without being disrespectful but yeah. i'm saying that the, the, the christian concept why haven't I provided a good answer? You're saying the Christian concept, yeah. we're not talking about religion, we're talking about metaphysics. No, but, no, no. we're talking about the truth, right? Remember, yeah. we're talking about the truth. So I'm saying the, the, the truth. Oh, you're doing it outside of religion, we're yeah, doing sure, it through sure. metaphysics. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Jack, but, but, just let me finish the, this, this point and then sorry about that. Then come back. Just on the point of the Trinity, right? You have three persons. What you mentioned is that you've got two relations. The persons are relations. No, no, no. Hold on. You've got three senses of consciousness. Okay. Now, no, we don't have. You what do you have? You do have three. You've got three, three wills. wills. Got no, three we don't. Okay. The father no, we don't. So, no. And I've seen you made that's that a, argument on TikTok every time. Why, does, why do you will. think that? Does the father have a will? The father has a will. Sure. Does the son have a will? The son has the same will as the father. Does the son have a will? The son has the same will as the father. So he doesn't have his own will. The son has the same will as the father. It's the unification. So hold on. Hold on. Yeah. So the, the the will of the father is communicated to the will of the son as the same will. It's the same will as in it's like a piece of cake and divided into two three. Parts. It's not divided. There's no division. You believe. I don't, don't want to be the same because he said things right. I think you're the one that believes in the division. If you believe in a divinely composed God, composition is division. Okay, that's another issue. We can come to it if you like. Okay. But I'm saying that you're saying that the, the will of God is the same. Now, this word the same can meet, be made in two different ways. Okay. For example, I have a phone in my pocket, yes? And you have the same phone, okay? So it could be that you have an identical phone. But it's, it's not identical. It's not identical. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get clarification from you. I'm trying to get clarification. Let me yeah, ask the, you. the two phones are not identical, so I don't I, know what I, you mean. I know. So let me just ask a question. Yeah. The question is: Is when you say the same, when you're saying it's the same, are we saying it's like one piece of cake that's divided into three? That's no. The will of God. Wait, so what are we saying? When you say the same, what do you mean? Okay. Cool. A substance yeah. is an independent nature. You're a substance. You can stand there without him needing you. Okay. You're a substance. You can stand there without you needing it. So God is a substance. A, substance, a substance. Yes, God is a substance. Substrate. <laughs> what? God can, so is God is like he can come under a microscope. Oh my gosh. Now what do you mean by substance? A substance is just an independent nature, bro. We're talking about metaphysics, not talking about physics. In physics, you can say a substance is like. Uh, no, no, you know what I'm saying? saying? I don't understand. Substance yeah, chemistry, you can say a, 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 a chemical is a, substance. is a material form. That's what substance means. N well, we disagree. Thomas, we, I thought you read Aquinas. You know Aquinas disagrees with that, right? No, no, no. It's, the word Aristotle that's disagrees what the word as well. Means. You, talk, you talked about Aristotle's metaphysics. He didn't know that substance okay, no, talk about immaterial form. Substance, okay, yeah. word substance means something material form. No, it does not. Okay, it's a duck. It, it does not. Okay. Check the dictionary, do your own thing. Aristotle, you literally no. spoke about Aristotle's okay. chapter 6 about metaphysics. About Aristotle chapter 1 explains okay. a substance. No. A substance is an independent no. ontological item. Okay. That's what a substance is. Okay. Right? No. So you can have let's, angels. Let's, angels so are substances because they can just independent. That's fine. So let's that's false. Let's use the yeah. term independent ontological item. Yeah. Okay. Is the will of God an uh, independent ontological item to the will of the Son? 
Okay. No. Okay. Why? Okay. Why? Okay. Because okay. the intellect and the will are what okay. attributes. Okay, beautiful. Right? Because beautiful. you're a human being because you have an intellect and a will. That's what makes you different from a pig over there. Okay, right? Sure. Because you have an intellect and a will. Pigs don't have an intellect and will. So there's something in the nature so of a pig. It, so wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Let me explain. Let me answer you. Yeah. There's something in the nature oh, of a pig. Me, I'm here, by the way. Yeah, I'm trying to. He's also interested, and I like teaching my fellow Christians in sure, Christ. Sure. He, there's something different in the nature of a pig and the nature of you that makes you a human being and makes the pig a pig. You have the intellect and the will. Those are attributes of your nature. If the father has the same nature as the son, then they have the same intellect and the will. That's the point. Okay, my, so my they don't have a different will and, and question. intellect. Is the will of the father, is it independent from the will of the son? No. no. Okay, so then when we talk about the will and you're saying that they're separate in some sense what in what sense is it are they separate they're not separate at all, at all. there's no separations in god oh okay beautiful excellent yes. so, so there's only one will yes okay so you believe in modalism no what are you laughing at i don't believe in modalism yeah, do you know what modalism is what's modalism you tell me ah you, you said me. I believe in modalism you tell no, me I'm asking you what do you, what do you, you believe the earth is flat do you know what the earth flat means no, no. no you tell what me is modalism? what is modalism you tell me, what's, what's modalism? What's modalism, what's tritheism? Tell me. Oh my gosh. What, Tri okay, so what is modalism? Oh my gosh. Okay. Is modalism modalism yeah. is saying that the relations in God are only virtually distinct. Okay. That's what modalism okay, is. Okay, no, but hold on. What, what, what distinguishes modalism from tritheism? Tritheism is saying that the relations are really majorly, majorly distinct. Oh, okay. So what are you saying? I mean, uh, tritheism is saying that the three persons are beings, independ independent beings. Sure, sure. So we'll go, we'll go to modalism again. What are you saying and what's modalism saying? So I am saying that the will is one because the will is an attribute of the nature which they all share. Okay, you're so saying I'm a modalist. No, no, Explain that to me. Explain to me why your view is not modalistic. Oh my gosh. Because modalism is saying that the relations are only virtual. I'm saying that they're real relations. No. What I mean by modalism. I don't think you understand what the no, Trinity no, no. is. Please, no, no, this, this is not going to work. Because you said that there are three centers of consciousness. Okay. They're so not three centers of consciousness. You don't believe in three centers of consciousness. You don't believe in no three No true world. Christian believes that. No, no, that's not true. That's true. That's not true. That is true. Okay, well, that is true. Council, Council of Nicaea, no true Christian believes that. Council of Nicaea doesn't speak about Yeah. Council, what's the Trinity? Well, come, please, uh, you're going from Philip to Paul. The Trinity is not three centers of consciousness. The Council of Nicaea says the Trinity is not three centers of consciousness. If there's one will, if there's one will, yeah, one will, which is an one, attribute of the nature. Okay, so it's one will. Explain this to me a little bit. There's one will. Yeah, there's one will. So, okay, one will. Yeah. How do you separate between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Oh my gosh. They're not separated. No. Okay. They're only anyway, really it, distinct. No. If they were separate, then there would be no, three my, different my beings. Is, we'd be polytheists. My question is... We're not polytheists, so they're not separate, brother. brother. That's what I'm telling you. Is there you. any separation between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? There's no separation. Oh, so it's one God? It's one God, yeah. Ah. So what, when we say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what do we mean by that then? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, yeah. real distinctions don't necessarily entail separations. Fazer writes this in quite, on page 206, in Introduction to Scholastic, uh, Scholastic, uh, Scholastic Philosophy. Okay. So he says that real distinctions don't necessarily entail separations. Okay, That's so why you guys get Trinity so confused so all the so time. So let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, please. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are really distinct because they have a real relation between each other okay but they're not separate they're not separate they're all one being they all exist in one nature they're not separate if they were separate then there would be three different beings do you understand what i'm saying christians do not believe in three different beings they're three different persons because of the relation what's a person no just let me because i think you think honestly you think that a person is a center of consciousness Sir? Stop poisoning the well. The you know, well. Oh. The well. The, so am I poisoning the well? Try to predict what I'm going to say before I say it. No, you said. No, you literally said okay. that the persons are. Uh, you, I believe in three centers of I'm consciousness. I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. You said that the will is one. Correct? Yeah, the will is one. Yeah. Okay. Now, if the will is one, yeah, is the power one as well? The power is one. Yeah. In, in the. No, no, is the power one or not? The power is infinite, so. I mean, I guess one, yeah. It's the power is one. The knowledge is one? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Oh, does the no, father know no, that no. he's the son? Does the son know this the father no, or something like that? No, no, no. We're, we're, we're in agreement now. 
This is exactly what I wanted. Why did he say that I believe in three centers of consciousness? He doesn't, he doesn't believe in three centers of consciousness. He said it himself. He said he does not believe in three centers of consciousness. Correct? Yeah, I don't. I don't. He doesn't believe in that. I don't. This is all I'm, I'm very happy with your answers. Okay. Go yeah, on. why? Because I have. Yeah, go Because on. he said that. I don't believe in three senses of consciousness. He said that. Right? Yeah, I don't believe in three senses of consciousness. He said that the wills are not distinct. That's what he said, right? Yeah, there's no distinct. There's no he real distinction of the wills. The will yeah. is an attribute. Okay. He of said the that nature. the will of the Father is not distinct from the will of the Son, which is not distinct from the will of the Holy Spirit. They right? all have the same will. There's no distinction. That's what, he, that's what you said, right? Yeah, they all have the same oh, will. Beautiful. You said that there's no distinction in power, so the Father doesn't have power that the Son doesn't have, right? The Father does not have power that the uh -huh. Son does not have. You said that, right? Yeah. Okay, so in every single sense, mm -hmm. there's only one God, correct? Apart from the relations. Okay, hold on. Yeah. So you believe in a God which has the same will, the same power, no... Now we go to the persons that you like to talk about. This is the last thing, and that's it. Okay. You're going to come to our side. Critical, critical. Bro, this guy always no. boasts this. I like your boasting, though. I like it. I like it. Go on. Okay. I'm not boasting. I'm gonna. Call, I will never come to Islam. Okay. I, you don't know. Ever. You don't know. Ever. You don't know. I was a Muslim before. I was not a Muslim, but I was looking into it. You were Muslim before. Uh, I was not a Muslim. Was the what was the point? What was the point? Bro, I said I was not a Muslim. I was considering it. So why did you say I was a Muslim before? Yeah, I changed my sentence. You okay. know, you can correct yourself. Okay, no, no, I'm sure. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm able to correct myself. No, no now, the, the relations. What are, what is relating with what? What is relating with what? What do you mean? If it's not one will relating with another will, one power relating with another power. My question to you is, what is relating with what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The production of the intelligible operations produces a procession. But hold on, excuse me. The procession no, hold on, hold on, hold on. is what causes oh, the critical, relation. Critical, critical. Yeah. <laughs> critical. Mm. The production is not uh, independent of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If the, production yeah. is, if the production is unitary, so there is no idea of relations that produce independently from Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh. There's no independent. you understand this? Okay. Oh, awesome. yeah. The independence, so ahead, the independence ahead, is not indexed to the. I'm not starting again. I'm just explaining the same thing. The independent. I'm explaining something What's that you relations? cannot understand. What's the, relations? the relations is how they're related to each other by the intelligible operations. I'm going to say the same thing again and again and again. So, okay, you can so, go back so, home and read Aquinas if you want. I've no, read what ahead. I've read, and go I'm going to tell you exactly, exactly. Okay. So they proceed by the intelligible operations. Okay. okay. So the intelligible operation produces the sun and the spirit. Well, excuse me. And are they, are they, excuse the me, processions they, and they, the relations are, are they really distinct? distinct. Yeah, they're really distinct. The relations. No, hold on. Excuse me. The relations are really so, distinct. Wait. Not the relations. What? You said the intelligible. Operations. The intelligible operations yes. are only virtually distinct. Allow me. You said the intelligible operations are virtually distinct. Yes, they're only virtually. Distinct. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for it. All right. So if the intelligible operations are virtually distinct, mm -hmm. Father, Son, 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 Spirit, then how does that happen in a, in a situation where all three wills are the same? Oh my gosh. What I'm do you mean three wills? They have one will. I, that's what I'm asking. How is it when the... When but the I spirit? told you a time okay. and time again. Listen, let me you, need to, you need to let listen to what I'm saying. Sure, let me rephrase it. I told you one will, yes, right? Let me did it. I tell you one will or not? Yes, you did. Let okay, so use one will. Yeah, I will. Use it. I will. Let me rephrase it. Mm. You said there's three intelligible operations, right? Yes. Okay. No. Yes, what? you did. You said intelligible operations are the same. Three. Listen. That's what you just said. Listen. This is what I'm saying again. This is what I'm saying. Did you say that? Or not? No, I did not say that. You did say that. I did not say that. You said that the intelligible said two, operations. Okay. Three intelligible operations. Count three intelligible operations. Sorry. Count three intelligible operations. I'll give you five thousand pounds. I don't understand what you're saying. Count three what intelligible what operations. What you're and I'll give you five thousand pounds. What you're saying is unintelligible. Okay. What? Itself. Because there's no such thing as three intelligible operations. Okay, so let me ask you again because I'm trying to understand your What's an intelligible operation? I'm asking you. What's you, an intelligible you operation? Use that, you use that language. You what's use an, that, what's an intelligible operation? You use that language, not me. Why are you saying I believe in something that you don't even know what I'm telling okay, you about? My friend, you're right. Please. Please. I've told you again and again. Brother, please calm down. I've told you again calm and again. Down. Calm down. I'm going to answer what you said. No, no. You're speaking. Oh, you're speaking quiet. My bad. Go on. You said there's a relationship between... Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or persons, right? 
There's a relationship between what? There's a relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, they okay. pre they are proceeding from intelligible operations. Okay, can you explain to me? Intelligible operations are necessarily yeah. two in number, the intellect and the will. Okay. You cannot have three intelligible operations, that makes no sense. No, brother, I will understand. What's the relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yeah, they are only distinct by the relation and what, what differentiates them yeah. is the procession. The procession differentiates them. What is proceeding from what? what is the proceeding from intelligible operations. What, is that, what does that mean? The that are two in number Can you explain what and are means? only vertically distinct from the essence. Brother, please. So the intellect uh, and the will. Brother, I'm answering you. No, no, the please. I'm actually trying to understand yeah, you. The intellect and the will. Is the intellect the and the will? The intellect and the will are the same in the nature. Okay. Uh, okay. No. They're the same in the divine nature. You don't answer my question. My question is this. What's the question, brother? Listen yeah. to what I'm saying. Go on. I'm saying you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. You're, you're saying that there's a procession of intelligible operations. Yes. Which are distinct between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what you said, right? Yeah, the processions, yes, yes. Okay. Now, I want to know what you mean by that. Okay. So, can you explain this to me, please? Okay, good. Okay, now. The Father, what is, the what Father is, what in is the act of knowing himself precedes the Son. And the Father and the Son in the act of willing the love precedes the Spirit. The Father yes. in the act of knowing himself precedes the Son. The act of knowing himself. I'm using it logically. So, he doesn't himself, really like think so about the himself. The Father in the act of knowing himself. He's using it logically. No, I'm just trying to repeat and understand. You're saying the Father in the act what of knowing himself. What do you think I mean by when I say the Father knows himself? This is going to be a very difficult communication. We're trying to learn from you, brother. I'm trying to learn from you. No, no, no. no. He's just, we're trying to learn from you, brother. He's, he's, giving, he's giving us his Aquinas uh, theology. I want to learn about the Aquinas, your, your Thomistic understanding. You're saying the Father from what? Sorry? Say again, brother. The Father from what? The act of knowing himself what? The Father, logically, the act of knowing himself precedes the Son, which is the object known. That's why the Son is called the divine word. Proceeds. the Son is. Proceeds. Yeah, proceeds. Okay. Not proceeds. Proceeds. What? No, proceeds. Proceeds. Proceeds or proceeds? Processions mean proceeds. No, brother, please. Brother. Brother. Please. I don't. I don't bro, know why, why are you doing this? Processions me proceed, bro. Why, why, brother, please. Uh, why do you think... Uh, okay, no, no. I'm, not I'm, making, I'm making sure I know what you're saying. There's nothing that I'm making sure I know you from the father. Uh, brother, you know there's, what I'm no, saying? there's no reason to be defensive. I'm not, I'm I'm not being defensive. I'm trying to learn from what you're saying. I think you're just being like trying to be manipulated, it's just my words. It's not going to work. No, I'm saying... I am. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to simplify it. No, to the contrary. To the contrary. Critical. Tell me again now. When you're saying the father, critical Thomas. Yeah. What's the relationship in layman's language between the father and the son? What's going on here? Yes, that's the procession. What does that there's mean? There's nothing. There's okay. Sorry, sorry for the confusion. The two fingers they're not actually like ontologically real. If they're saying like obviously logically, now can you just yeah, tell me what's going then on the father, the father and the son? Yeah, I'm explaining it to you. Please, Please don't interrupt me. Okay. The father precedes the son. What does that mean? The father precedes the son. A procession is just a relation between two things. So why is that? Why like, is that relation? There's a heavy body. Okay. The relation between the heavy body and its ability to fall to the center of the earth. It's just a relation. That's about it. So what is the relation? And, uh, we're going to use an example. You give an example. But can yeah. I know what the example I'm use, is? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to use another yeah. one. What? What do you say? You, you've used an analogy. Yeah. Right? But I want to know what you, what you perceive the relationship between the father and the son is. What are they doing with It's just a procession. It's just what? a procession between the act of the knower and the object known. What does that mean? Oh my god. I just explained it. No, okay. Don't use the word. I'm trying don't, to. I'm trying don't, to don't, don't, oh, don't use the word procession. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Don't I'm use, trying to know you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to know you. I'm trying to know you. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to know you. Yeah. I know you as a Christian man. Okay? Yeah. You exist right there. Okay? Yeah. Now, in the act of me knowing you, I get this object in my intellect that you're a Christian man. I don't even know your name. Right? That object is what proceeds from the substance of the Father. So, right? so I, 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 the son. Father. What 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 is coming from you from the Father and Son? What, what's going I on? I thought that you understood Thomistic metaphysics. Brother, I thought you I read don't, Aristotle. Brother, I'm and now you don't understand anything I'm, I'm saying. This. I'm enduring this. You don't understand please, anything please. I'm saying. Yes, I, I'm trying to understand it from you. As you guys can see, Muhammad Hijab starts to tremble on his words and runs away when this very young, intelligent Christian debunks his claims against the Trinity and the Word of God. Now what's really interesting about this is if we look at the Word of God, we see the concept of the Trinity to be there. Now many Muslims will say, oh, well, why do you believe in the Trinity? Where is the word Trinity? Ah, debunked. No. 
silly goose. Whenever you look at the concept of the Trinity, it is actually found in scripture, but it's actually referred to as the Godhead, which is... It's just referred to as the Godhead, which is the biblical term for the Trinity. And whenever you look at the biblical term of the Trinity, not only is it referred to as a Godhead, which we find in Colossians 2.9, but we see the concept still to be there. For example, we see that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is a part of the Godhood, and they share their Godhood divinity. However, whenever you look at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it makes a very clear distinction in Scripture between the three. But we know that it is a part of the same Godhood because in Genesis chapter 1, it says, For God said, Let us make man in our image, showing a plurality with an us and our. The thing is, it's not a royalty us and our, not saying that our God isn't royal, but it's just showing within context that the us and our just means more than one in Genesis chapter 1. So we do see the concept of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being God, and this is nothing foreign to Scripture. In fact, what's really interesting is when you look at the Quran, it shows that the Word of God is true, and it actually talks about Jesus Christ being a part of the Godhead. It actually refers to Jesus Christ. Uh, they say that he had a virgin birth, right? according to the Quran, just like in the Bible, and they believe that the Holy Spirit is what uh, went inside Mary's womb whenever he was born. And so this is very similar to the Word of God that we believe in, except they have a very corrupted way of seeing things. And so that my our, our Muslims, brothers and sisters in humanity, unfortunately they're asleep because they don't want to accept the reality or they're ignorant about what the truth is. So I encourage you guys to keep exploring the word of God, keep reading the word of God because you don't want to end up like Muhammad Hijab, you don't want to end up pork depraved during Ramadan and not knowing what you're talking about when it comes to the Trinity because all the evidence is there to support the true word of God. Let me go ahead and know what you guys think in the comments. Please comment your opinions, subscribe, turn on notifications and smash that like button. I hope you guys have a very blessed weekend.